What do you think of my new stream cam? What's that? Logitech stream cam. No, 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 no. This is a Logitech stream cam. This is one of these 20 quid ones view cameras with a little bit of an upgrade. But it was the Logitech stream cam that started all of this off because I've been denied about getting a better quality webcam for ages, even though I know I've harped on about how my 20 pound webcam is brilliant, 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 and you don't need anything else really to get going. I don't know, it just nags at you and you sort of think, ah, do you know what? I've been doing the streaming log for a year now. Maybe it is about time I got a better quality webcam. And I saw this second hand for 75 quid on eBay and it was raising money for charity. And I thought, well, there we are. Go for it. Go on. Treat yourself. And it is a good camera. But getting it to work with my computer, I've had problems there. And the actual results I got with the chroma key and with the green screen, much, 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 much worse. And I'm so, so disappointed. I thought it was just going to be an easy plug and play thing. So many issues I've had even just getting it to work because it's got this USB-C connector and converting it is not so simple. Anyway, that, that's a whole other video I want to make. I haven't made it yet at the time of recording this, but if I do make it, there'll be a link up in the top corner there. But yeah, okay. One of the things that I thought would be good though is that this camera's got a narrower field of view. Now, if you go onto YouTube and watch streamer tip videos, they'll say, oh, this webcam is really good because it's got the wide field of view that all streamers want. Yeah, yeah, most streamers, not necessarily all streamers. Because, you know, this one's view, as I've said, it is a brilliant webcam, for the price especially, because it's like 20 quid, and sometimes it's even less, sometimes it's reduced to 15 quid. Um, but the problem with this or any webcam is that it's got a fixed field of view and this one's got a 90 degree field of view so if you're looking for a cheap webcam with a wide field of view this is brilliant straight out of the box but that wide field of view causes me a bit of a problem in my particular niche use case because i've got a square green screen although the same would apply if you've got any green screen that goes onto the back of your chair they're quite small and that means that i mean i don't know if you find the same as me i find i have to crop the image quite a lot right so i've got this hd webcam and then instead of using the full hdness of the webcam i'm actually cropping the image because you can see the, the stuff behind the green screen yeah. then i stumbled on this video and i don't know how i even got to it it's just a youtube rabbit hole and it was craft computing and, the, and the, they were drinking beer and talking about this logitech c920 not a stream cam and uh, they said if you can't get a new webcam why not get a new lens and that, that there was a penny drop moment i thought a new lens never even thought of that before. Now, the uh, Logitech C920 conversion is not for the faint-hearted. It involves buying a kit that's been made, and it's, it's a brand new housing, essentially, for the innards of your C920. So you have to take apart the casing. That looks quite involved. It's not impossible, but it looks quite involved. Take out the circuit board, literally rip the guts out of it, and put it into a new body. <sighs> I, I, I don't know if I'd be comfortable with doing that. I mean, you know, pre-lockdown, Maybe you got a C920 for cheap, but post-lockdown, even the C920s were blooming expensive, and ripping that apart is, is again, yeah. You, you don't want to do that with something that's still in guarantee, do you? The advantage, though, you get from doing that is that you can put brand new, different lenses on your C920. And then I thought, well, hang on. These ones views, these, these cheap ones views, have a lens that screws. And I started looking up some details and I thought, well, I don't know for certain without opening it up, but it looks like this might use some sort of standard lens mount. Because if you think about it, what's the cheapest way of making a cheap webcam? Well, why not have a standard mount, a standard off the shelf mount? And it turns out that's exactly what's in these. It's called an M12 mount or S mount. They both mean the same thing. And once you know what the standard mount is, you can start looking for lenses. And the reality is then, the world's your oyster. I mean, there's loads of them. Uh, you know, you've got to be careful to make sure that they are the right mounts. Sometimes C-mount lenses come up. That's a different type of mount. Uh, so make sure it's an M12 or an S-mount. But yeah, there's, there's loads of varying prices. Cheap to expensive. All sorts of different fields of view. Focal lengths, aperture sizes. And I was just, wow, okay. Uh, we've, we've gone from one fixed field of view to basically any that you want. 
And then I found this one, which is a very focal, essentially a zoom lens, a mini zoom lens for a webcam. And I thought, well, actually it's perfect because in the description it said, this type of lens is perfect for situations where you don't know exactly what field of view or focal length you need in your setup. And I was like, ah, that's me. I haven't got an idea. I mean, I was looking at focal length calculations and, and, and I mean, I should understand this. I'm a physicist to talk, right? <laughs> I've done lots of physics in my life. But even so, some of the terminology that's used is so confusing and it's not used consistently. So you have got to be a bit careful and make sure that you buy a lens that will work. And how do you know if it'll work? Well, hmm. Yeah. So because there's so many different lenses and so many unknowns, I didn't really feel comfortable recommending any particular fixed focus lens and saying, yep, this will definitely work. You have my guarantee, my rubber stamp, because I don't know. Your setup's different to mine and not all of the M12 lenses will work with the ones view because maybe the back focal length will be just too long. But this lens works. This very focal lens works. I can guarantee that. So if you can find another one that's exactly the same, I will show you how to replicate what I've done and get this sort of super size ones view camera. Now, one important caution before you start, I don't know whether this will void your warranty. I've looked at the page on Amazon where I bought this and it says that repairs are covered as long as you don't accidentally or deliberately damage the camera. Well, nothing I'm gonna show you will damage the camera, but I don't know. The best thing is to err on the side of caution and only take apart a camera that you're happy to lose your warranty on. And the other really important thing to do is to make sure that you buy a ones view with a lens that unscrews. That might sound painfully obvious, but there are a couple of variations of the ones view camera and there's even a brand new one out that's got autofocus. Don't take that one apart. I don't recommend doing that at all. The one you want to buy is the ones view 101. It says it on the corner of the box and it also says it on the website when you buy it. Uh, if in doubt, look up ones view 101 and it's this one, the one with the lens that unscrews. And then you just need to take it apart. So on the back of the ones view camera, you've got these two little rubber covers. You just need to pull those off. They've got a little bit of glue on the back. It's not really hard to pull off. It's just, it's a bit annoying to get stuck to your fingers. So keep those safe. You want to put those back on afterwards. And those will reveal two Phillips head or posi drive screws. So then you just need to undo those, keep those screws somewhere safe as well. And uh, once you've done that, the front of the camera is actually what comes off. So you don't have to worry about the circuit board falling out or the lens falling out, it won't. Just pull the front of the camera off carefully like that and that, it's as easy as that. And then you just need to unscrew the lens. Don't pull on the lens, that's the mistake I made. <laughs> I tried to pull that lens cover off and it's glued together. And also you might feel a bit of resistance as you unscrew it, that's fine. It's got some lens grease in there, which actually impressed me. I thought once we have gone to the level of putting some grease into, into the thread to, you know, for longevity. But also bear in mind, it's grease, it's gloopy, right? So just make sure that doesn't get inside the CCD or onto the end of your lovely new lens or onto the end of the old lens as well. You want to keep that safe in case you, know, you want to put it back afterwards. And I'd recommend at this point as well, putting the front back on the camera. You don't have to, but you won't be able to get the front back on over the very focal lens. So you don't have to screw it up, just, just put it on. So uh, yeah, and then just screw the lens on. Whoa there, Jamie. You were about to screw the lens all the way in, weren't you? I mean, that, that's safe. It is perfectly safe to do that. It'll screw in. Don't over-tighten it, but it'll stop at the back of the mount. And you'll think, right, great, the lens is in. But the focus will be in the wrong place because part of this M12 mount, S mount specification is that the there's no one position where when you screw the lens in, it's guaranteed. You know, with a 35mm camera, you screw the lens in, it locks in place, that's it. You don't need to work out where the focus is going to be. With the S mount, you need to manually screw it and then screw it to find where that focal point is. So what I found useful is uh, these lens lock rings that I bought. And uh, I put one of these on the lens. You might need to experiment with putting the lens in and out a couple of times just to find the sweet spot. For me, the sweet spot was here, just screwing the lens lock a little bit uh, away from the very end of the thread. And then when you screw the lens in, it'll stop at that lens lock rather than going all the way in. And the reason you want the lens to stop ultimately is because you're going to be adjusting the focus and the zoom and you, yeah, you don't really want the lens to be spontaneously unscrewing itself when you're doing that. It's, it's just going to be inconvenient. 
And there you go. Now you have yourself a Jamie Nemeth modded, supersized ones view webcam with a field of view of anything you want it to be within a certain range. And that range is pretty big. I'll show you. I'll show you in my actual studio because it's the camera I'm using right now to record this video. This might go horribly wrong, but you can go from way too wide and you can see too much of the room to all the way in. To all the way zoomed into the pause on my face. That's too close. Let's let's reset it all and do a jump cut. There we go. I think we've got it back to roughly where it was. But yeah, 40-ish quid compared to £75 that I paid for the Logitech Stream Cam and brand new. Originally it would have been £180. Well, yeah, this is £40. It has a field of view that's really adjustable. Okay, it's only ever going to be 30 frames a second. The Stream Cam is 60. It doesn't have autofocus. You're gonna have to manually reach forward and do that. But for a webcam, autofocus isn't really crucial. That's one of the main things that's come up in the review of autofocusing webcams. Useful for meetings where you might be sat in different places all the time, but if you're a streamer, you set things up and, and the whole point is to set it up and leave it as it is. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to build your own supersized webcam. And I'm gonna put behind the scenes footage of all the testing I did as well on, you know, like I took apart some of the older cameras and practiced some of the things I've shown you in this video. I'm gonna put all that up on my Patreon page and it's gonna be like behind the scenes bonus content for patrons. So uh, we'll experiment with that as well. I am a bit of an experimenter at heart, aren't I? Like subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this of me trying to build things on a budget and as cheaply as possible and, and and still getting good results to me this is much better than i don't know what you think let me know in the comments to me this is much much better than i've ever got out of the high-end webcam and i'm going to be very happy with this for many streams and youtube videos to come